This is code.org. If you don't have this, you need to go back and do the other portions of this lesson. But at this point, we got a fully working game. So let's see what we're doing. Reviewing your game, now that you've added in all the features, it's time to play the game. Play your game a few times to check for bugs. Look over the project guide to make sure you haven't missed anything. Do any last minute changes. For bugs, guys, keep in mind, you can always use watchers. If you're not sure if your score is updating correctly, if I put it down here, I can track whether it is. Well, it's not going to do anything until I get a score, but there we go. Okay, I'm going to use this screen also as an excuse to do some slight edits. I think the pizza is too large. Um, and so the pizza scale is obstacle here. So let's do 0 0.2. And something that's rather fine that's a bit better to do is maybe each time the pizza regenerates, I'm going to add a component that changes its speed. It makes it a bit unpredictable. So it would change its velocity. When does it regenerate? Well, when it gets to the edge of the screen or, or when the player grabs it. So let me look. When the obstacle's at the edge of the screen, I'm going to change up its velocity. Just to add some challenge, obstacle velocity. And again, I want it randomized. So I'm going to use a random number. And I'm going to say, hmm, let's do negative 5 to negative 10. Why not? Okay, let's check out what that looks like. I'm not sure I can really tell. Oh, it's the obstacle. <laughs> Uh, we could do it for the obstacle too, actually. Let's see. Negative 50. So it's random. Whoa. Yeah, that definitely working. I don't think we want it that fast. Negative 15 maybe. And then let me add obstacle. Oh, obstacle. So now we can track it. That's negative 5. It's negative 13-ish. So I'm going to do it negative 5 to negative 12, I guess. Something like this, or maybe negative 10. You just want to make sure the player is still fast enough to jump, so I might have to change that up. Now, I'm not going to change the speed of the target, right? What I'm going to do when it is off the screen, I'm going to change where it is located. So it's Y value. I'll do sprite. Y, target dot Y, and I'm going to do the same thing here, math, random number, and where did I start the Y value for the target? Target's Y value starts at 100, so I'm going to do 50 to 150 and see what I think of that. And this time, each whenever the item regenerates, it will have a different Y. So now it's at 52, now it's at 120, and it just adds kind of a component of randomness. Keep in mind, when I jump and get it, it will be at the exact same point. So if you want to prevent that, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to head to where the player grabs it. Score, right? So if the player is touching the target, this is what we would want to edit. And I'm just going to paste that code. When it regenerates, our target is going to uh, move around. Maybe for clarity, I'll put score here. Boom. This is super cool. You should be really proud of all that we... I might... Ah! <laughs> I'm not that good at this. I might need to make my player jump faster. But yeah, we have done a lot of code. Really impressive stuff. We The health is here. I'm glad they gave us this game over screen. We draw the sprites first to make sure that this text appears on top of them. We're checking if they are at the edge of the screen and we repeat them. We change up the player as we're jumping. We we use is touching and conditionals to re regenerate stuff, add to points, subtract from health. We drew a screen. We used variables and sprites and then just independent integers. Really cool. We've made something really cool. Onward.